How are everybody? Hopefully the audio is working. I just did a five minutes of this and it didn't work. But all right, so here we go. So today I'm going to talk about a little bit what we've been doing in class, uh, virtually of course, and that was we talked about the three types of stress and the faults and the boundaries and that. So we're going to apply the three types of stress to the faults today. As you may have seen in your graphic organizer, the three types of stress were tension, compression, and shearing. So tension was when we, we pulled apart, pulling apart. Compression is when we push together. And shearing is when we move side to side. So I've got my fault blocks here to show you. When we have tension, we're pulling apart. When we have compression, we are pushing together. And shearing is side by side. Now, we talked the other day, and on the graphic organizer we did, we talked about a foot wall. The foot wall is something you could walk up with your feet. See how that's slanted? You could walk up it. That's the foot wall. The hanging wall, on the other hand, you couldn't walk up it with your foot. You could hang from it by a rope and climb the rope up. So a hanging wall. All this comes to life when we put three blocks together, two hanging walls and two foot walls. And if I apply tension, which again was the stress of pulling apart, watch what happens to the hanging walls, the center section. The hanging wall drops relative to the foot wall, which is a normal fault. If I have compression and I push together, what's the hanging wall doing now? That's right, it's going up. So when the hanging wall goes up relative to the foot wall, we have a reverse fault. And the final fault, we said, was a strike-slip fault. So a strike-slip fault is when we move side by side. See how the river moves or changes, shifts over, side by side. All right? So what I need you guys to do today is we're going to actually draw a diagram. We're going to learn the parts of the fault. The fault is, again, that's that break in the rock, that part where the two blocks will slide. So get a piece of paper, um, something to write with. You can uh, do this in your portfolio if you have it, or take a picture and put it in your slide when you're done. All right, go ahead, get yourself a piece of paper, pause this video when you're ready, piece of paper, something to write with, and a ruler if you want. And we'll see you in a minute. All right, so here we go. We're going to do the parts of a fault today. We're going to do the parts of a fault. And this is take two. I actually did this whole thing, and this is what we're creating today. But I did take, this is take two because I forgot to hit record on the camera. So here we go. Um, piece of paper out. What you're going to do is on the, the top half of your paper, you're going to make a large rectangle. Okay, now this right here is very similar to this right here, which is what we were talking about earlier. Let me just make sure we're still recording. We are awesome. Is this right here is the fault. So when we have a square here, that's looking sideways at a section of earth. Okay, so there we go. That's what we're kind of simulating today, two-dimensional. All right, so now we're going to draw that break in the rock, which is going to be this line right here. Okay. And this is called the fault line. Not my fault, it's your line. Okay? So the fault line is the point, is the area, area inside the earth where the rock is broken. So down here, fault line area inside the earth where rock is broken. Sorry, I'm ahead of myself. There. All right, so the area inside the earth where the rock is broken. That is the fault line. Um, pretty common. We have one section. This is the, remember, the foot wall and the hanging wall. One wants to go one way. The other one wants to go the other way. They're kind of bound up together. When it breaks, it starts breaking at a certain spot. That point inside the earth, let's say it's here. It could be shallow, it could be deep. That's very important when it comes to like tsunamis or the intensity you feel here at the surface. If there's a shallow point where it starts to break, you can get a lot of movement up here. When it's deeper, those earthquake waves we're gonna talk about soon, they kind of dissipate or they dissolve a little bit. So it's not as vigorous up here shaking. But this point, back to this point, is called the focus. We're gonna focus on this, get it? Okay. The focus, is the point inside the earth where the rock starts to break. So it's the, the uh, focus down here. These are so you're gonna put a picture of this in your journal and have these definitions as well. 
it is the point inside Earth on the fault line where the rock starts to break. Okay, so there we go. We have the fault line, which is the area inside the earth where the rock is broken. And then the focus is where it starts to break again. So yeah, the rock's broken, but it's kind of, like I said before, it's kind of bound up. If you look at my knuckles, here's the fault line. And they're kind of bound up. And after a while, they'll kind of rip apart. Another analogy is a zipper. You know, zippers, you can tell where your sweatshirt zips together, that the, the fabric is broken there, but it's kind of locked together with the zipper. But when you start unzipping, that point where you unzip would be the focus, and then it comes apart from there. So that's another analogy that might help you guys. All right, so you get a different color pencil, or a, just a, you want to use a lighter press on this. When the focus breaks, when that spot breaks, it sends out seismic waves. It sends out this energy in all directions. So picture this like if you threw a uh, rock into a pond. You throw a rock into a pond, it's going to send out ripples in all directions. And eventually those ripples will reach the surface, and that's going to be our next spot. The point on the surface directly above the focus where the energy first hits the top is called the epicenter. Epi stands for surface, like my epidermis, my surface. Epicenter. So the epicenter of the earthquake. The epicenter, you have, I'm going to draw a little mole coming out of here, popping out of the ground, then we'll put a little stick figure here with a hammer playing whack-a-mole. Okay, I have to do that. Sorry. So we have our whack-a-mole dude or the dudette at the top. Make a long hair just in case you want to do that. And then you have a whack-a-mole because it's the epicenter, the point directly above the focus where the energy first hits. And the, we're going to put that down here as the definition for epicenter. It is the point above the focus. where the energy first reaches the surface. Okay, so there we have it. We have the parts of a fault. And here's my high-tech explanation of parts of a fault for you.